So in this case, supply shifts left for lettuce and weather destroys part of the crop because there's less, there's less that we have. Um, and then demand won't change. So supply will shift left if weather damages the crop for lettuce. And if the dollar price for, of one euro goes up, demand will shift right. And then supply shifts right for pink salmon if there's new technology and new fishers entering the industry. Demand shifts left for pink salmon when there's increases in consumers' income and reduction in the price of six. So this, yeah. So then the supply of gasoline decreases when there's refinery breakdowns, Mideast politics and warfare, rising price of oil. The demand for gasoline increases if consumers' incomes increase and low mileage US SUVs are popular. Supply shifts right for sushi if there's an increase in the number of sushi bars, and demand shifts right if consumers' taste for sushi increases. So those are kind of some of the situations there. I'm just going to go through. So this next activity, this is demand curve for soda. So what would happen if a reduction in the supply of soda caused the price of soda to increase? So what would happen? Would demand shift left or right? Left. Yes, that's great. Oh, oh shoot. Oh, movement along the curve, okay. Yeah, I sorry for that. So yeah, it would just move. If the price of soda increases, there would just be a movement along the demand curve. And then this is a supply curve for t-shirts. Show what will happen if new automated sewing equipment increase productivity in the t-shirt manufacturing industry. So what would happen in this case? Supply curve will shift to the right. Yes, that's great. And then this demand for curve for gasoline. Show what will happen if an increase in the price of oil causes gasoline prices to rise. <laughs> so we move along the curve because it's price related if there's anything price related it's a movement along the curve so um yeah if the price changes the, it just moves along the curve and this is the supply curve for soda Show what would happen if the government imposed a per unit tax in the production of soda, what would happen? It would shift along the supply curve to the left. Yes, that's great. <laughs> so supply decreases, yeah. And this is supply curve for domestically produced steel. Show what would happen if foreign competition caused the international domestic price of steel to fall. It would be along the curve in this case because it's price related or not. Yes. That's a good good job on that one. So it's along the curve because it's price related. That's great. And then this is demand curve for cigarettes. So what would happen if a public health law was enacted to raise the, the price, raise the age to legally purchase cigarettes 25? What would happen? So um, demand curve would shift to the left. there'd be a less of market size it's great because there's less people buying because they're not old enough this is a supply curve for cellular phones show what would happen if an increase in demand for phones caused an increase in equilibrium price what would happen
So we'll just be moving. Hooray! We're good, good, good try. So it's it's since it's a price change, it's movement along the curve. Then this is the demand curve for generic brand soda, inferior good. So what would happen if consumers' incomes decrease? What would happen? So it would, yeah, it would shift right. You got it. So it's an inferior good. They buy more of it when they have less money. This is a supply curve for bottles of water. So what would happen if consumers begin using refillable water bottles, causing a decrease in the price of bottles of water? Excellent. Good to hear, Brian. That's great. Um, so what would happen here? If people are using refillable water bottles, the curve will shift to the left. Uh, so, so it's a price change. So, what would happen if it's a price change along the cor the curve, right? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> great job. So then, this is a supply curve for solar panels. So what would happen if the government grants manufacturers of solar panels $1,000 subsidy for every solar panel system sold? So what would happen if they had a subsidy? What happens? Uh, what yeah, that's great. You got it. <laughs> then this is demand curve for peanut butter. So what will happen if the price of almond butter, a substitute for peanut butter, decreased? The demand will decrease. Yeah, that's great. Got it. <laughs> so it's a substitute. So since the price of almond butter decreases, people will buy more almond butter and buy less peanut butter because almond butter is cheaper than peanut butter. And then this is the demand curve for peanut butter. So what will happen if the price of jelly, a complement for peanut butter decrease? What will happen? The demand will increase. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> yes, you got it. So it's a complement. So jelly, and peanut butter bought together. So if jelly goes down in price, they're gonna buy more peanut butter and more jelly because they buy them together. Then the supply curve for erasers. So what will happen if the price of erasers increases? What would happen? Shift along the supply curve to the right. Yeah. And this is the supply curve for pizza. So what will happen if the price of cheese and an ingredient for pizza increased? What would happen? Along the supply curve to the left? Yes. <laughs> They would, they would produce less pizzas because one of the ingredients is more expensive. So supply would shift left. And then this is supply curve for strawberries. So what would happen if there was an increase in the number of strawberry farmers? Supply curve will shift to the right. Sure. Great job. And then this is the supply curve for oats. So what would happen if the price of corn and other crop for farmers can produce a decrease? So I'll put this in the chat just in case people want to keep working on it. We'll just do this one and then we'll move on. Supply would increase. Good job. 
so yeah like if you want to keep doing that feel free uh like i'll just put you put the unit I'll put the link in the chat so great job everybody that was great and i'll put the link in the chat for this too if you want to work on this after so yeah we will go through the next powerpoint great job everyone so we're gonna go through market failures just gonna bring this up. So, the so consumer surplus is the difference between what a consumer is willing to pay for a good and what the consumer actually pays. So, the extra benefit from paying less than the maximum price. So, everyone has the maximum price they're willing to pay. So, for me, like my maximum price that I'm willing to pay for. Let's say Pepsi is like five bucks, let's say, right? And let's say the actual price for Pepsi is two dollars. My consumer surplus is five minus two, so it's three dollars. In this case, Bob's maximum price is willing to pay is thirteen dollars, and the actual price is eight dollars. So his consumer surplus is five dollars. And then you have to just do maximum price willing to pay minus actual price to get the consumer surplus. So that's right here. That's this triangle is consumer surplus. And to get the area of this, you got to do base times height over two. Consumer surplus, triangle area. Triangle area. So that, that's how you do that. Then producer surplus is the difference between uh, what the actual price producer receives and that minimum price it will accept, extra benefit from receiving a higher price. So this is for sellers. So let's say Carlos is selling something. The lowest he wants to get for his product is three dollars. That's the lowest he wants to sell it for. So let's say let's say that's let's say he's trying to sell. Uh, so let's say he's trying to sell milk. The minimum acceptable acceptable price that he would take for milk is three dollars, and let's say the actual price is eight dollars. So his producer surplus is five dollars. So you take the actual price minus the minimum acceptable price, and then so to calculate this too, it's the same as consumer surplus. You just have to calculate the triangle area, and that's just base times height divided by two. So like instead we do P one minus zero times Q one minus zero divided by two. So yeah, so that's how you do it. So the price part times the Q Q1 part divided by two. So consumer surplus, producer surplus. So then if they underproduce, if they produce less than equilibrium, it's called underproduction. So the, the efficiency loss of the triangle. So that's what they lose. And then overproduction is when they produce too much more than equilibrium. And the efficiency loss is this triangle. So to calculate that triangle area, you got to do F minus G times Q3 minus Q1. So what do we do? So private goods are offered by companies and they're rival and excludable. Public goods are provided by the government and they're offered for free. They're non-rival, non-excludable, and they have the free rider problem. Since they're non-rival and non-excludable, even people who don't pay taxes have benefit from them. So, like, if you don't pay taxes, you still benefit from sidewalks. And that's financed by taxpayers. And then also, if you don't pay taxes, you still benefit from national defense. So all of that is paid for by taxpayers. And even if you don't pay taxes, you still benefit from it. So here, uh, willingness to pay. Collective willingness to pay is when you add up all the individual willingness to pay. So in this case, uh, net benefit, so net benefit is total benefit minus total cost. And highest net benefit happens when marginal benefit equals marginal costs. So in this case, marginal 
benefit will not exactly equal marginal cost, but it will get close. So here, uh, this is the closest we'll get where it's eight and 10. So that's the closest. So they're almost equal. And then that benefit is the highest at five. So four lane highways are most efficient in this case because we get the highest net benefit for four lane highways and marginal cost and marginal benefit are almost equal. So that's why we have four lane highways most for the most part. Like we have like, we have four lane highways because of this. Professor? Yeah. Excuse yep. me, I, I just have a, a quick question. How the benefit is measured in those cases? I was wondering. That's a good question. So they, they that is a good question. So they measure the benefit in terms of some of it is profit based, but not all of it. The, so some of it is profit based. Uh, there's also they factor in a lot of things. So they factor in like reductions in crime, reductions in accidents, reduction oh. in deaths, and they value all of that in a dollar value. So they um they put that they have formulas that they use to put a dollar value on the reduction in uh in accidents deaths crime also they put a dollar value on the increased productivity the reduced time to drive they can put a dollar value on that and a lot of it has to do with like reduced uh, use of gas um and uh there's like there's a statistic that they use it's called value of a statistical life and the value of a life but it's a it was around $2 million when I, when I studied it about five years ago. Uh, so they usually value, they value statistical life about $2 million. Uh, just they have to do that for a lot of, like a lot of these types of projects. Um, it's hard to put a dollar value in life, but they have to, for the, to value these types of projects. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, that's a good question because it's hard to value these these benefits. Um, and the cost can include environmental degradation, uh, cash costs, uh, costs of reduced business. Like they factor all that in and they put a dollar value on it too. Okay, so, I, I just what well, I was wondering exactly because of, of what you mentioned, it's not like a profit or loss; it's benefit. So it might be something else. But, so that's why I, I asked you for it. Uh, really helped me. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah, th it's it's uh, it's a good question because they there's there there are uh, consulting companies that they do this for a living. So it, it's important work because they figure out what should be paid for. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's a good question. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So, the government, they tax us and businesses, and they take that money and pay for public goods. So, uh, if something has a positive externality where they don't produce enough of it, the government tries to subsidize it to produce more. So, like, so like um, subsidize to produce more of a product that provides positive externalities. So like for example, and the negative externalities too much to produce, so like they tax it to produce less of to produce less of the product like cigarettes basically they put excise, excise taxes on it to reduce the production of it because too much of it is bad for society so you had correcting negative externalities Oh, 
So correcting negative externalities, I do that through taxation. Positive externalities, do that through subsidies. Negative externalities, overproduction of output and therefore over allocation of resources. So they can correct that through private bargaining, liability rules and lawsuits, taxing producers, direct controls and market for externality rights. Positive externalities, they can, uh, they can produce more of it through private bargaining, subsidy to consumers and producers and government provision. So government could provide it directly or they could subsidize a private company to provide it. The government can correct things. So the government can tax bad things to stop, to reduce them. And the government can subsidize good things to increase them, basically. So asymmetric information is when there's uh, information that's not complete or accurate for buyers and sellers. So people are not provided equally with information about price quality or some aspect of the good service. So th there needs to be market information sufficient across everybody. So everyone should be provided the same amount of information. So if... So if there's no... If, if there's no law for government inspections, and no law against false advertising. This would lead to people who just wouldn't buy gasoline because they would have to pay a lot of money to verify the if they're the, the gas is safe, if the advertising is correct. So consumers would not buy gasoline. So that's why uh, that's why we need that's why we have information allocated to everybody about gasoline like everyone is provided with the, with correct advertising and not misleading advertising and uh, there's government in inspection of gasoline pumps because uh that keeps the market open because there wasn't any government inspection or or laws against false advertising people would just not buy gas then licensing of surgeons. So suppose there are no regulations regarding the qualifications of surgeons. So then the market would eventually sort out the true surgeons from the medical imposters. So, so the true surgeons would, would, would stay in the industry and the, bads, the bad surgeons would leave. But the problem is a lot of people would die. A lot of people would get sick. A lot of people would have serious injuries from bad surgery. And it would, it would destroy the market. Because it would cost too much money to figure out which surgeons are good and which surgeons are bad. Um, so this wouldn't work. That's why we have regulatory bodies for surgeons. And the moral hazard is a tendency for a person to alter their behavior after a contract to sign in ways that are costly to the party. So drivers may be less cautious when they have car insurance, which is a problem. That would be bad for the car insurance company. And unemployment employment compensation insurance may lead to some workers to shirk. So workers would just quit, basically, because they'll they'll get employment insurance. And then adverse selection is when information is known by a party to a contract is not known by the other, resulting in an unaware party incurring major costs. So insurance people who are most likely to need insurance, riskier those who buy insurance. So Ways to overcome information difficulties without government intervention include franchising, credit reports, and 